All right, so today it started raining and it's thundering and it's storming. So you're probably gonna hear some thundering in the background and there's literally nothing I can do about it. I'm not gonna wait until tomorrow to start recording because it's probably gonna go on all day and I really just wanna go ahead and get this video out. But Dogpack404 finally released his third video, his third video for now, as he said in his newest video talking about some very serious allegations in regards to a former employee who used to be a CEO for Mr. Beast's company, a former employee who used to be a COO who committed allegedly uh, some sexual assaults, uh, some sexual assault allegations have been going around. And apparently he also used to work in the adult industry. And then of course, there's also some other allegations and information revolving around uh, Jimmy slash Mr. Beast himself. And Dog Peg's video starts off with some videos from Upper Echelon in regards to Jimmy covering up a lot of information. And that we know for a fact that that definitely is the case because if you go and watch Upper Echelon's videos, you can see that he shows a lot of evidence to a lot of comments getting completely erased or deleted or just being hidden in general from the comment section from any of his videos. But also the fact that Jimmy has retroactively had a team of people go and go to his his old videos on his YouTube channel and remove certain parts from certain videos that could ruin his reputation and make him look bad. But regardless of that, and regardless of stuff that we already have already known about and we have already talked about numerous times before, if you haven't seen my previous videos, please go ahead and do so. But Dogpack starts talking about James Warren, and James Warren is Jimmy's cousin, and he was the CEO of the Mr. Beast brand. And the reason why Dogpack talks about him is because there were some allegations thrown about him him, as such as him being a former drug addict and apparently offering drugs and sex workers in the office space for employees to stay and work longer hours. Uh, apparently there are some also other claims of him being abusive towards his girlfriend, being abusive towards his dog. And the main thing that I would say that is the most important about James Warren is that he's also allegedly, uh, everything that I'm going to be saying in the video from here on forward is just going to be all alleged. We have no idea if any of this is real or not but based off of the evidence that Dogback has shown and from the testimonies that we've seen and heard from multiple people. Apparently, James Warren, again, who was the CEO of the Mr. Beast brand and Mr. Beast's company and is Jimmy's cousin, he apparently had told someone to go and talk to someone that he had been working with in like a real estate company and go invest into real estate. And it turns out that that entire thing was actually a Ponzi scheme. So James Warren was also a part of a Ponzi scheme and the woman that he was recommending his business associate to. She had lost a great deal amount of money. I'm, I don't really remember how much she lost, but she lost a whole lot of money. She was going through a lot of terrible things in her life personally. And the just the, the added fact on top of getting all of her money like taken away from her through this Ponzi scheme that from someone that she thought that she can trust because it was being recommended to her from a trusted source or who she thought was a trusted source. It was just the cherry on, on top of the cake that just really sealed the deal that James Warren was doing some really shady things behind the scenes. And conveniently, in Dogpack's previous videos, he actually name drops him a couple of times as well as the next person we're going to be talking about in a little bit, LaCoya Hill. And all of James Warren's like social media and his LinkedIn bio and everything revolving around him just got deleted out of nowhere. Some of you are probably going to be wondering why talking about this guy even matters whatsoever. And I think the reason why it matters so much is because if it wasn't for Mr. Beast putting his cousin into a position of power that he shouldn't have been in, then indirectly because of him, this wouldn't have happened to begin with. He wouldn't have allowed his cousin to be able to recommend this woman to go and talk to his business partner who was running a Ponzi scheme and she wouldn't have lost $1.3 million. If it wasn't for Jimmy, this wouldn't have happened to begin with. So some responsibility needs to be taken and I think because of him allowing his cousin to be in that position to where he could offer this woman do this kind of thing, I think he needs to take some sort of responsibility for the actions that his own family member had actually committed as he was working for him. But another person that James Warren was apparently apparently very good friends with was another man named LaCoya Hill. And as I previously stated, LaCoya Hill actually used to work in the adult in industry. And yeah, already that alone is very, very, very weird because why would they hire someone who worked in the sex industry 
on a YouTube show that is m predominantly meant for children. It's it's exactly like we were talking about before when it, the information revolving around Jimmy hiring uh, someone who was known to be on the sex offender registry. It's the same thing here. The same thing applies. It's like, why would you hire someone that was on the registry for your company that is meant to be for children, that makes videos that are meant to be for children? They're going to be constantly being surrounded by a bunch of children. Why would you hire someone like that? Why would you hire someone who used to work in the sex industry to be the CEO of your company when your company makes videos that are dedicated for children? It's just, it's very strange. And as if that already wasn't bad enough that this very weird individual was, or I shouldn't say weird because obviously adults are allowed to do whatever they want. They, if adults want to work in the sex industry, they're perfectly allowed to want to work in that industry. We're going to have more power to them. But it's so strange how this individual went from like doing booty call Wednesdays or some weird shit like that. I, I have no fucking idea. Like, like doing some really like, like inappropriate lewd activity, right? Because he used to work in the industry. It's so odd that he gets hired for Mr. Beast's company is put into position of CEO, and then uh, when once information of him saying his assistant comes out and he's allegedly fired, instead of actually being fired from the company and no longer being the chief operating officer of Mr. Beast's company, he's instead moved over to Mr. Beast's dubbing company. And yeah, he's basically just moved from, from one company to another company that Jimmy also owns. And then it's later revealed that Dogpeck shows with evidence that he was then rehired onto Jimmy's main company. And he was even promoted to an even higher position, that of CEO. So it's just so strange how he had James Warren, who has all these allegations thrown towards him, like Ponzi schemes, abuse of his girlfriend, offering drugs and women towards other employees in the office space, and then hires a gay man who used to work in the sex industry, puts him into the position of CEO, and then fires him, but not really fires him. He just moves him into the entirely different company that he still owns after he was accused of sexually assaulting his assistant and then is just quietly rehired back into the company. And even currently still now acts as the president for Creator Global and Creator Global is the dubbing company that Mr. Beast owns. And just all this information is just so insane. I couldn't help but remember something about Jimmy that just came to the back of my head once I started like thinking about all this information. I find it so funny that Mr. Beast has this dubbing company and within his dubbing company, I think he actually has the Japanese voice actress for Naruto, because apparently Jimmy's like a huge fan of Naruto, to dub him specifically in in Japanese. So it's just so funny how it's like Jimmy is this huge fan of Naruto, but Naruto as a character would never want to be friends with Jimmy whatsoever because he's greedy, manipulative, and later, as we're going to talk about, insanely misogynistic towards the women in his office space. But really, if you ask me, I think his actual realistic favorite character is Hisoka from Hunter x Hunter. And I'm going to explain why I think that because it's just the, the comparisons are kind of uncanny. You know, Hisoka is a very flamboyantly homoerotic pedophile, right? Because he's he's very homoerotic. He's very uh, uh, flamboyant, but he's also very interested in Gon and Hunter x Hunter. The reason why I say like that has, that has to be Jimmy's favorite character is because Jimmy is willing to hire a sex offender on his fucking team and then has a flamboyantly gay man be in the highest position of his company, which is CEO. So it just it just makes sense in my mind, right? If you just make the comparisons, it just makes sense to me. Like, it's so weird how it's like, you can be the most evil motherfucker in the world. You can be the, the heavenly demon, Doflamingo, and be the most awful, genuine, horrible human being in the entire world. And he'll be like, oh yeah, I'll still hire you. You can, you can still work for my company. I'll put you on my payroll. I don't give a fuck. You can still work for me. I don't give a shit. So, yeah. That's the second allegation after we just talked about the first one with James Warren. Uh, LaCoya Hill. I, I don't understand why he was ever put into the position that he was in. He is no longer the CEO for uh, Mr. Peace's company anymore. But like I said, he's now just the president of Creator Global. So he still works for Jimmy anyways. So that needs to be addressed and talked about. Uh, Jimmy is most likely going to go ahead and talk about this in the future when he finally responds to Doc Peck's uh, videos and all this information that has been coming out about him and uh, the Beast Games stuff, which apparently I didn't even know about this. I, I actually saw this from Pegasus channel on his More Pegasus channel. Apparently there's someone in the Beast Games who was also uh, like on the registry or is, is like a, an offender or something like that. He, he has a criminal record pretty much, right? 
And again, Beast Games is supposed to be a game show that is meant to entertain children. And the fact that they have someone like that trying to win this contest that is meant to entertain children is very odd. Continuing forward though, the rest of the video pretty much talks about how Mr. Beast has uh, created and, and harnessed this community within his uh, workplace environment that is insanely misogynistic. Mr. Beast himself is insanely mi misogynistic. Sometimes when women exit a room, the men in the room will then talk about how they would like do this, that, and the other to them, which is like assaulting them, make like rape jokes, and all this other really disgusting shit. Very misogynistic stuff that's been that's being talked about towards the female employees in the workplace environment. Of course, they can't go to HR about it because, well, Mr. Beast's mom is actually the <clears throat> head officer of of the HR department, so they can't go to her to talk about it because she's insanely biased. What are they supposed to do other than just, just take it, right? They, they have to just take the words that they're being, that's being said towards them or else they're gonna have to risk their job, right? Because if they talk about it in any way whatsoever, if they confront anybody about anything that's being said, uh, to this degree, all these misogynistic comments that's being made about them, if they're confronted in any way, nothing, nothing like that is gonna happen. So, I think to really wrap up the video, I really strongly suggest that you go and watch the video for yourselves. I don't want to keep your time uh, going on for much longer. Uh, you know, Jimmy did the meme. He hired like a million dollar lawyer. He has like Harvey Weinstein's lawyer, I think. There's a lot of information that's talked about in Dogpack's video. A lot of terrible workplace environment that's being supported and and even enforced by Jimmy and Jimmy himself because he actively engages into it. Again, this is all legit, by the way. <laughs> I have to really emphasize that because I don't want to get sued <laughs> because even I don't know how much of this is true or not. And mo some of this could actually just be entirely false and I would have no idea, right? And even Dogpack himself says that there's a lot of information that he talks about that could potentially be real or not be real, such as the such as the James Warren stuff. Some of the information that he shares about James Warren could potentially be true or not be true, such as the him knowing that his business partner was uh, committing a Ponzi scheme. Uh, the Lacoya Hill stuff in regards to the the essay that one's real, like like that one is confirmed. He the Dogpack talks with, with a whole bunch of for, uh, employees, not even just former employees, but employees that are actively working at Mr. Beast's company right now. And they say, yeah, like no, that like that happened. Like that information spread around the entire company, and everyone knows that happened, and everyone uh, has some idea about what happened to Lacoya and where he ended up going after that happened. And it, it, they just back up Dogpack's claims, and that's messed up. Anyways, Mr. Beast has a lot of explaining to do. I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen from here on forward. It's it's kind of strange. I'm not really sure what's gonna happen here on out. It really just seems like this this huge company and this huge uh this huge empire just that mr beast has built over the last like 10 years or so I don't, I don't know how long he's been doing youtube i think it's been around 10 years it just is so strange seeing this massive juggernaut now who's like huge on youtube just suddenly kind of be dropped down to such a degree obviously his youtube channel will always still be incredibly successful because so many people are just not gonna know and they're probably not gonna care anyways and especially it doesn't help that a lot of his audience are children who don't understand the severity to, uh, to all these claims being made against him. But yeah, uh, not much else to say. Go check out the video for yourself. It's very informative and potentially in the future we're going to get another dog pack video that talks about a lot more uh, assault allegations that were not mentioned in this one particular video. And unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to make another video whenever Mr. Beast responds. And I really don't want to do that, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more, please be sure to subscribe. Once again, I want to apologize for some of the thundering that you're probably hearing in the background of this video because, well, it's storming and there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys next one. I'm out. Peace. Let the